If you think about our vision, we can only really see what's just in front of us. But with sound, we can hear to the side and also things that are behind us. So we're hoping to um, exploit this potential that sound has to complement the visual display of the drug molecule interactions. So there's some great challenges in designing new molecules for say treatment of cancer or various diseases, say new antibiotics, and that is understanding how those particular molecules interact with molecules inside us, enzymes, proteins, all sorts of different things. And one key part of that is understanding how the shape of a drug molecule, let's say it was a drug molecule to treat cancer, say tamoxifen, which is used to treat breast cancer, fits into particular other molecules within uh, the body. Um, and a key part of understanding and designing new drugs is making that fit stronger, better and tighter. So there are two key parts of the project. The first is to build a demonstrator software. Um, this is to um, portray drug design in a more game-like way. So members of the public can have a go at a computer game that helps them to understand how drugs are designed and how sound can help us with that. And the other key part of the project is a public um, performance, an audio-visual interactive performance here in the music department at the university, um, which will tell the story of um, research aspects of drug design through sound and through visual media. So the thought was, and the idea was, that we could augment uh, this visual representation of how one molecule docks into another with sound. And the sound would tell us a key thing about this interaction, and that is how well the two molecules were sticking together. I'm one of the programmers on this project, and my job really is to get the data on the chemical interactions and to try and present some kind of useful sound using that. I'm using a few different software applications. So we've got PyMol, which is a molecular visualization program that um, draws our molecules for us and does a good job of rendering them in real time. And it's quite responsive. Um, we've got Max MSP, which I'm using for two things. One is to get uh, interaction data from the user so they can move a joystick or do some kind of physical interaction. And Max will give us the data on what they're doing. And that communicates with PyMol, tells it where to render the molecules. And then PyMol sends out uh, the positional data on the molecules to a third bit of software called PTools, which calculates um, the molecular interactions in real time. As I was developing the whole aesthetics of the piece uh, in terms of uh, uh, sound and sonific data sonification and uh, sound design, and then we worked in collaboration with uh, Jakub. Uh, on the visualization, so I was feeding uh, audio to the visualizations which were uh, interactive uh, and that was kind of driving the performance. I was working with Radek to prepare an audiovisual show and I uh, was responsible for uh, the audio generative uh, visuals. Uh, we created uh, visuals based on molecules that, was provi that were provided by the scientists, uh, so each part of the visual show was uh, about a docking a molecule into protein and we used proper uh, anti-cancer drugs as, uh, in terms of shape and form, but we used glitches and distorted it to the music and it was also driven by music. Uh, I was using a variety of uh, wavetable oscillators, I used search modular to develop all the collisions and the glitches uh, that were showing when the, uh, the collisions between the, uh, the molecules happen. Uh, so, and then in the game you can, you can hear them uh, once users are trying to match molecule and the protein. The docking process is very complex, so the molecule was floating around with the camera. It wasn't obvious, obvious if, it's, if it's in the right place or not. The sound was uh, giving the hint. If, it's, if the sound, sound was ambient, the, the visuals tend to be calm and nicer. Uh, but uh, when the, the, the music was distorted and more glitchy, so, so were the visuals. 
Working in a multidisciplinary project like this is really exciting. So there's a team of six of us and we all bring different skills and expertise and experience to the project. And what's really key and absolutely thrilling is to see how putting our ideas together can produce some exciting and really surprising results. People have really enjoyed it and that's, that's, that's a really major thing. We've had um, mixed responses but for the most part people have said things like it's been relaxing, they've said the sound has been helpful, um, in some cases they didn't um, necessarily arrive at, at good solutions and got quite frustrated with the system but they really um, appreciated how the sound could be used to help um, and they really um, just enjoyed trying something different I think and, and hadn't really experienced this side of chemistry before. Spatial sound has not really been used in these sorts of projects using sonification. So sonification is displaying data as sound. Very often we do that in, in stereo, so um, sound as we're used to hearing it. But with spatial sound, we can have put sounds all around us in 360 degrees around us. So in front, behind, above and below. Um, and that just gives an added dimension to what we can really do, what we can portray with the oral aspect. You know, it's, it's chemical engineering and it's crazy spatial um, orientation stuff that, that, and, and actually people who uh, didn't know nothing about this and have never used a, a space mouse before and um, are not used to this kind of gameplay are uh, coming in and, and actually able to solve these quite complex problems. Um, so if, if they can do it, then getting the, the chemists who are designing these drugs with, with the sound is just going to be really good. I really like working with proper uh, with real data. Uh, it's, it's, it gives the, the, my work a second layer that it's not just the visuals, it's the meaning behind it. It's quite exciting actually to work with this balance between the nice aesthetics and then being scientifically correct, which usually is a, a kind of opposing uh, leverage. In the world uh, we're living now, uh, being surrounded with so much data, uh, then that our brains don't uh, don't cope using just visual uh, feedback and visual display. That's why uh, what we were trying to show in here as well, that uh, using sound as well as visuals uh, might potentially boost uh, the process in terms of processing the data and uh, understanding scientific facts. What I'd really like is that we could take some of these findings from the project uh, and see if they can help us design brand new molecules. And I, my particular target is breast cancer. If we can design a, uh, an enhancement to some of the existing drugs, say, say for example, tamoxifen, uh, by using the sound clues for molecular design. This phase of the project is really to engage the public with the exciting research that we're doing at the moment. But we're hoping it'll lead on to a longer and more in-depth research project where we really get to grips with how sound can help in the drug design process um, in order to speed that up, make it more efficient and hopefully in the very near future to design more effective drugs.